Good evening. My name is James K. Holder II. Some of you may know me as Sir James II, and I'd like to welcome you back to the Weekend 10. This is your top 10 countdown of the week's top stories in 10 minutes or less. And today is July 13th, 2018. I want to say rest in peace to Sandra Bland. Today marks the three-year anniversary of her death while she was found dead in police custody in Texas. Her death marked a, another pivotal moment in the Black Lives Matter movement and was also a huge part of the push to end police brutality in the United States. Um, so we, today we honor you and remember you. The first story today I want to talk about is just the fact that Washington, D.C. has a boil water advisory. Now, this is something that we've had in Atlanta, of course. Um, the nation has been plagued by bad water and toxic water and all sorts of things that are going on. But this advisory started at least yesterday, on Thursday, the, July 12th, and impacted 34,000 residences and businesses. Um, since then, the amount of people impacted and the boundaries of the D.C. Uh, water advisory have been reduced, but people are still without clean water in their homes or are needing to boil water before they can safely use it in their homes. The irony of this is that the toxic water levels have come to a head while Donald Trump isn't in D.C. He actually is currently on his first official trip to the U.K. He is embarrassing us across the globe with his, this, his meeting with uh, the Queen of England, which looked pretty bad by the videos of him uh, greeting her and her dealing with him. But, you know, he always looks bad on video, so who knows the extent of that. Um, he didn't seem to be as well received as the Obamas were um, in previous years. And in fact, his appearance there marked protests of at least a quarter of a million people in London, including a large inflatable Donald Trump baby balloon that's flying all over the city. It's quite absurd, but very entertaining for my purposes. So check that out in the links below. The third thing I want to talk about is the Mueller indictment of 12 Russian hackers. Now, every, you know Fridays are when these things come out, and Friday the 13th is no exception. Um, we have basically gotten enough information to conclude that Guccifer 2.0, which was behind many of the hacks that led information from Hillary Clinton and the DNC and John Podesta to uh, WikiLeaks, uh, is has basically been named as Russian agents. That's who they, th those people were funded by and worked for. So there's more information on that coming out. It is all a big part of a huge scandal uh, in, that's uh, surmised as the Mueller investigation. And there are many, many other indictments that have already come down, uh, guilty pleas, you name it. So they say it's a witch hunt, but it's really not much of a witch hunt because they keep finding witches. Number four. Uh, all of the Thai youth soccer team has been rescued. Now, this is a story that we were all following. Uh, these guys were trapped in a cave because of some floodwaters that came in, and they, have been, they had been down there for 15 days, but this week they were all rescued, and we are all thankful for that. Uh, you can follow the stories in the link below. Um, one thing I really want you all to check out is the uh, Nanette by Hannah Gadsby. Now, she's a stand-up comedian. Uh, this comedy special, which is on Netflix, is not all that funny. I'm just going to put it out there. But it is very, very important. She is basically what you would call as a... I mean, she's not transgender. She's not... She's I, binary in that way. But she is a lesbian, and she talks about being growing up in society in New Zealand where everyone was basically super homophobic and it led to a lot of negative things that happened in her life. Um, and that also contributed to her not being able to really confront uh, a big part of her, you know, her lifestyle, I mean, her uh, orientation and being able to really be honest about it. And um, even in coming out, she wasn't really able to do that based on certain things. So this is a really, really good piece uh, especially for people who don't necessarily understand the terms or understand the anxiety that many people face within the queer community. It's a really, really, really good special. And it's really not all that long. It is quite entertaining. Uh, I would highly recommend it to everyone. It's kind of required reading. Um, 
Speaking of just media and toxic masculinity, which is a huge topic of Hannah Gadsby's special, um, Charlemagne the God is coming back under fire for allegations of drugging and raping a 15-year-old girl in 2001. Now, there's a lot of conflicting reports, there's a lot of conflicting uh, evidence uh, that Charlemagne points to as exonerating evidence, even though he ultimately pled guilty to a lower charge uh, at the time. So I did a whole episode about it uh, of Not On My Watch. You can watch that at www.holderstudio.com or www.notonmywatchtv.com and see for yourself. I have audio from some of the interviews and you can really go in and listen and understand what he's already admitted to and what he denies in previous um, interviews. The next thing that has been shocking and disappointing and hurtful to many Americans is Trump making a, an additional SCOTUS nomination. Now, despite all the things that are going on with the Mueller investigation, despite all the things that we know about just the stealing of this election from 2016, Donald Trump is still making SCOTUS nominations. And the GOP and the, the Senate, which confirms his picks, is hell-bent on getting him whoever he wants. That just happens to be Brett Kavanaugh at the moment. This is an ultra-conservative. Uh, this guy is in the pockets of big business. He is someone who is um, anti Roe versus Wade. We already know the entire Trump administration has basically promised to overturn Roe Ro versus Wade. And that's something that is just very chilling beyond just uh, patient confidentiality, women's right to uh, health choices and options. Uh, it really will turn back the hands of time in this country uh, several, several, several decades. Speaking of nominations, on a good note, uh, the Emmy nominations have come out for this year. And it's very exciting to note, there are a few high points. One, one of my favorite shows, Queer Eye, was nominated for four uh, Emmys. Uh, then you also have John Legend, who uh, participated in Jesus Christ Superstar. It got nominated for many, many, many awards. But I think John Legend specifically got nominated for two awards. And what's significant about this is that if he were to win, he would become one of the EGOTs, the Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, Tony winners, uh, among the likes of uh, Rita Moreno and Whoopi Goldberg. Twelve or 13 of those people who had that distinction in all of those uh, awards. Nine, speaking of television, huge deal, Pose FX. Now, I've been obsessed with this show. I haven't talked too much about the show on this, on this um program, but Pose is my must-see TV for the week, every week since it debuted um, last month. And the important thing about Pose is that many of the actors are also from the uh, trans community. It's not a bunch of people dressed up playing other roles. Everything is really, really authentic in this. And as far as Janet Mock also made her uh, directorial debut in last week's episode, which was one of my favorite episodes of the series. I cannot get enough of it. And thankfully, I won't have to because it was renewed for a second season, despite the fact that everybody says no one watches the show. I'm someone, and I watch the show. So thank you, Ryan Murphy. Thank you, Janet Mock. Thank you, FX. And thank you for everyone who does watch it, who is a somebody like me. And we hope that you will tune into season two. Finally, the other thing you should be tuning into this weekend is Serena Williams at the, um, in the Women's Singles Finals of Wimbledon. Now... This is a big deal because if Serena Williams were to win, uh, she would match Margaret Court's record of 24, uh, I guess, uh, slam wins. So like basically if you, uh, you know, slam competitions, anything that's within the Grand Slam circuit, if you win uh, like Wimbledon or US Open or Australian Open, whatever, that's like a win. But no one has gotten uh, the 24 mark other than Margaret Court, and that's a record, and, uh, well, that's what makes it a record. And Serena Williams could tie that, uh, despite the fact that she's just getting back onto the court. She's had a bit of a, you know, rough start since she's given birth, obviously. Um, and it's really amazing to see her just performing and dominating as usual. I want to thank you for tuning into this week's post, and I hope you'll continue to watch on Instagram TV and also YouTube. As always, I want to ask you to relax, relate, and resist. Thank you.